here we are with chapter five of Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Let's begin. We escaped our pyramid prison from Mr. Peabody's boat. Then we raced across the desert. We had to stop Penny's wedding before it was too late. We saw Penny and King Tut standing before a large crowd. We hid behind a giant statue of Anubis, the god of death. He looked like an Egyptian man with the head of a dog. How are we going to get past all those Egyptian soldiers? I asked. We need to trick them, Mr. Peabody whispered. Then he explained his plan. We would pretend to be animus and convince King Tut to call off the wedding. King Tut would be so terrified, he set Penny free. As the wedding began, we climbed into the statue's oversized head. Mr. Peabody pulled out a megaphone. I am Anubis, he said. If this marriage pact is sealed, I will shower down upon the land uncontrollable plagues. He was so loud, it really did seem like the statue was speaking. While Mr. Peabody talked, my job was to make the Anubis statue look angry by blowing smoke around his face. We lit a fire. I fanned the smoke. It whirled around the statue's eyes and out of the mouth. The crowd looked terrified. So did King Tut. Our plan was working. Take the girl to the city gates and leave her, Mr. Peabody instructed. The guards grabbed Penny. Suddenly, some ash from the fire fell on my foot. Ow! I cried, coughing from the smoke. I tried to stamp out the ash with my foot. Then I heard a loud crack. The mouth of the statue broke and tumbled to the ground taking us with it. The crowd was furious to learn that we had tried to trick them. Thinking fast, Mr. Peabody, Mr. Peabody jumped into the broken mouth of the statue. Penny and I hopped on behind him. We rolled that mouth like a sled through the crowd and across the desert. Stop them, you fools, I commanded. We scrambled into the way back as spears whizzed past us. We shot into the sky just in time. All we had to do now was return Penny to her parents. Then life could get back to normal. But then we heard an alert coming from the dashboard. Beep! Mr. Peabody peered at the screen. All that zipping about about the cosmos had drained our power supply, he said. We're going to have to make an unscheduled stop. I groaned. How could we run out of gas at a time like this? We just have to get enough power to make it to the Renaissance. And my old friend, Lenario Vinci, Peabody said cheerfully, we're going to, to the 1500s. We landed in Renaissance, Italy and walked toward Leonardo da Vinci's house. Mr. Peabody explained that Mr. da Vinci was an inventor, a scientist, an engineer, and a painter. Peabody, old friend, what do you need? Mr. Da Vinci exclaimed. The way back needs a jump start, replied Mr. Peabody. While they worked on fixing the way back, Penny and I explored. We climbed into the attic of Mr. Da Vinci's dark workshop. It was filled with crazy models and inventions. It's like a toy store, said Penny. One of Mr. Da Vinci's flying machines sat in the corner. It looked like a boat with wings. Penny knocked on it to test its strength. Penny. We should leave that alone, I warned. She climbed into the cockpit anyway. Just tell me how it works, she said. I explained how it was built. But how does it take off, she asked. Oh, I replied, you just pulled down on that lever. Penny yanked the lever toward her. The machine rocketed toward the window. Ah, I screamed, hanging on to it, onto the side for dear life. Woo, shouted Penny. We shot out of the house. I struggled to climb into the cockpit next to Penny. We're going to die, I cried. Penny rolled her eyes. Oh, stop being such a party pooper. Here, Sherman, you fly it. She tried to get me to take the steering wheel. I shook my head. Penny let go of the steering wheel. I felt the plane starting to nosedive. You're going to have to save us, Penny called as we fell through the air. But I can't, I cried. I'm serious. I don't know how to fly. You can do it, Penny replied. I watched the ground get closer. It was now or never. I grabbed the steering wheel and pulled up. I felt the flying machine right itself. See, Penny said, you got this. I grinned. Penny was right. 
I was flying. If only Mr. Peabody could see me. Maybe he'd let me drive the way back. Penny, I glided past M Pliddy, Penny and I glided past Mr. De Vinci and Mr. Peabody. Sherman, Sherman, what are you doing? Mr. Peabody yelled. I'm flying, I called back. But Sherman, you don't know how to fly, Mr. Peabody shouted. I panicked. Mr. Peabody was right. I didn't know how to fly. My hands started shaking. I lost control of the flying machine. <sighs> I screamed. Turn, Sherman, Mr. Peabody called. It was too late. Crashed into a tree. Penny and I climbed down. We weren't hurt, but I couldn't say the name for flying the machine. But I couldn't say the same for the flying machine. I should have felt bad for smashing Mr. Da Vinci's invention, but instead, I felt alive. That was pretty fantastic, I called to Penny. She just laughed. Maybe we should be friends after all. Mr. Peabody and Mr. Da Vinci raced over. My flying machine works, Mr. Da Vinci cried. Sherman, you are the first flying man. You should be very proud, Mr. Pe you should be proud, Mr. Peabody. The look on Mr. Peabody's face told me that he wasn't proud at all. Tune in next time for Chapter 6.